So, hi everyone, um, I am João Borges, I am a researcher at the University of Aveiro in Portugal, I am also the chair of the International Younger Chemist uh, Network, and together with me I have uh, Catarina. Catarina, can you present yourself please? Hi, I'm Catarina Erman, a postdoc currently um, in Queens, at the Queensland University of Technology in polymer chemistry, and I'm the treasurer of IYCN. Thank you, Katerina. Uh, so uh, today we are here to celebrate uh, the Global Women's Breakfast uh, organized by IOPAC. And as you know, the, the theme of this year is empowering diversity in chemistry. And of course, it is very important to uh, overcome the barriers um, uh, to general equality uh, in science. Uh, as such, today we have, uh, as you can see in this first slide, we have a great lineup of speakers distributed by all over the world. So in my case, it's uh, it's uh, middle of the morning. Some other cases like uh, late evening. So, but it's really great to to have all of them uh, in this engaging discussion that is very important uh, in these in these days. So we'll have uh, uh, with us uh, um, Dr. Bet Bettina. We have Dr. Francis, Dr. Oiling, and Dr. Javier Garcia Martinez, and we'll present themselves uh, uh, shortly. So before going into the the, the event itself. Uh, let me just show you the, the program. So we'll start with a brief introduction of the International Younger Chemist Network uh, and some activities that we are doing also to promote diversity across chemical science. Then I will hand over to uh, uh, Javier to uh, uh, give welcoming by IUPAC and also to contextualize the importance of the GWB and when we started and why uh, IUPAC is organizing the GWB. Then we'll present to the panelists and engage in the panel discussion, and then we'll finalize with some uh, closing remarks. So uh, who we are? So uh, the International Younger Chemist Network is an associated organization of IOPAC since 2017. Uh, it was the time when we signed the Memorandum of Understanding in Brazil. Um, so yes, we are a quite young organization, less than five years uh, old. And uh, we, of course, we collaborate a lot with IOPAC in promoting uh, joint goals, um, we collaborate in joint projects, uh, and of course, we are highly aligned in the strategies also to uh, uh, empowering uh, diversity, uh, of course, across the, the chemical science. So IUPAC also provides us uh, technical and logistic support uh, to support in our development, and several of our members are active within IUPAC within several uh, uh, projects, and specifically, specifically regarding the uh, Global Women's Breakfast, we have some people that are highly involved in the task group uh, as members. And uh, um, so we held uh, our first uh, General Assembly in, um, in uh, IUPAC in Paris in 2019. And then our uh, later on last year, uh, it was supposed to be in Montreal, but to, of course, to the pandemic, we held it virtually. Um, and it was really a, good, a great turnout to engage with uh, all delegates from all over the world. So. Uh, uh, regarding our mission and vision, so you can see our mission is really to connect and empower younger chemists globally, and we aim to support and advocate for younger scientists across the world and working across the, all the chemical sciences. So, and we are uh, organizing several initiatives, several events that aim really to empower the community of uh, uh, younger chemists uh, 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 distributed worldwide. And for those of you that uh, um, uh, might be thinking how you can join or how, if you are eligible to join, you have here the membership form. Uh, so just follow this link. You can find it at the, uh, our website. And um, in brief, if you are younger than 35, you, uh, you are already fulfilled the criteria to become a member. But even if you are over 35, but you are doing your bachelor, master or PhD across chemical science, you are also eligible or even if you don't fill uh, these uh, two uh, criteria. But for instance, if you finish your postdoc training or any training in chemistry within the last five years, you are also eligible. So you can see that criteria is quite uh, um, diverse. So we are quite inclusive in the members that we can gather and we really want to engage with all of you uh, uh, worldwide. And here I show you the, the picture that of delegates attending the, that first uh, General Assembly took place in Paris in 2019. 
So this is our uh, current executive board, and you can see that the really diversity uh, is really important uh, among the, the board to pursue the projects, and we are really distributed uh, uh, through different countries and continents. So within the 14 uh, board members, you can see we have eight women and uh, six uh, men. You can see the countries that we are representing, and we are uh, very glad, of course, to count on all of these people, but also not only these people, all the people that are belonging to each of these teams that we are lighting here, governance, public outreach, finance, international society liaison, social media, conference presence, all the people that are contributing uh, to the activity we're organizing. So we are very pleased. And also the different community of volunteers that is uh, helping us in uh, empowering the community of younger chemists worldwide. So we are very pleased. And this is really something that we want to, uh, to strive into our future to empower diversity, uh, gender equality as well. And is based on this uh, uh, knowledge that is coming from different people, uh, coming from different worlds, different perspectives that we grow and that we can better support the community of younger chemists worldwide. So you can really see our commitment to equity, diversity and inclusion if you go into our homepage at the IYCN website because we really believe that we can always succeed if we gather uh, people from all over the world that will share their uh, opinions, their skills, their views, and irrespectively on their race, ethnicity, gender, uh, identity, national origin. So we really want, uh, we are an inclusive organization and we want also to engage with uh, our few because it's the way forward that we have to empower the, the community and, and grow ourselves as an organization. In this regard, so we have been, uh, just mentioned that we have been uh, organizing and being involved in several activities. So this one, you can see this paper that has been co-published in different uh, uh, publishers. Here I show you as a representative uh, the paper that has been published in Nature Canvas in 2020. And uh, you see, I underlined the people that among the authors list that have been contributing to this uh, uh, paper. This paper came out uh, uh, not only, but also as a result of the murdering of George Floyd and the, 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 um, uh, regarding the community of black chemists who want to, to also to support that community and represented, uh, underrepresented minorities. And this was also one of the activities. We were very pleased also to contribute to this paper and to raise awareness uh, about the importance of, uh, uh, um, of diversity in science to catalyze uh, change. We have also other activities within our newsletter. Uh, we have also amplified the voice of some uh, DEI or EDI organizations. And you, you can see here some of the examples. Uh, and as I mentioned also, we are also uh, uh, quite active uh, and we have support within the IYCN board that are also involved as members of the Global Women's Breakfast and supporting the uh, activities uh, and all the structural organization. So, uh, Beyond that, our commitment is even reinforced this year. So we came up also with, uh, after exchanging, of course, within all the boards. So we really want to increase the diversity, uh, equity and inclusion. And really, this is really important for us, not only to uh, uh, attract diversity uh, within the membership of IYCN, but also in terms of the activities that we'll be pursuing. And we have just launched, um, so in the beginning of this month, two new committees that we are very uh, uh, glad to receive your applications. So uh, um, you just have to complete uh, the Google form that you, that you can see underneath these uh, flyers until the March 15. And you can also apply not only for a team leader position, uh, but also if you don't want to leave these committees, you can also apply uh, um, uh, to join as a committee member, or you can also apply uh, um, to both positions. And then of course, we'll, we'll assess your motivation uh, and see the best candidate that would fit at least for the leading position. And just to mention uh, that we are also be, uh, launching this uh, uh, um, uh, committee on science for policy. This is really also relevant to highlight uh, the importance of having young people involved in, the, in policy and gather them involved in the, uh, what will be the main uh, um, 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 activities, main actions that they should be involved because they are the future gen generation. So they should be really involved and sitting on the same table with other policy makers and so on. And uh, for instance, one of the projects that we want also to engage a lot is sustainability, but not, not only. So really think that we, we should have a voice in, the, in, in here. And that is why we, also, we have also created this committee. So please, if you are interested, please just follow the link. We have also disseminated a lot via uh, our social media channels. So, and if you have any questions, of course, please uh, email us. 
Now, just to mention before going into the panel, that we have also one workshop related to the diversity and inclusion that will be happening on February 23rd. And you can see already here the, the link and the speakers. So um, this is really important for us, as, as I mentioned at the, the beginning. And really, we want to engage with the community, what we can do better, how we can improve diversity, because this will make really and will drive change in the, across chemical science, but in science uh, overall. OK, uh, having said this, now I will hand over to Katarina that will uh, uh, um, introduce the, the, our panelists, our great panelists from today, and then engage in the panel. Katarina, please. Thank you, Jean. Um, uh, sorry, 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 before that, maybe Katarina, I will hand over to Javier. Maybe it's better. If I may, yeah. so uh, Javier, sorry, Javier, will yeah, that would be fine. Thank you very much, uh, Joao. Uh, I have to say this is a real pleasure because being with uh, so many friends celebrating the Global Women Breakfast is exactly what we want to do, and we couldn't find a better partner than IYCN to have this very special Global Women Breakfast. So I know that when IUPAC comes to your mind, the first thing you think about is chemistry nomenclature. But I want you to leave this Global Women Breakfast with a different image of how you pack. This is, a, this is a family. These are the friends, the colleagues, the people that I admire and made me work for this community. This is a picture that was taken in Paris during our General Assembly. And, and this is the reason why I decided to run for, for president, the people behind how you pack. Of course, the main thing we do here is to gather data. When you go to the periodic table to look for a um, atomic weight, well, that number, it doesn't come uh, on the Bible or in the Quran or any other holy book. Actually, you need to go into a lab and actually get the data. And that's what our volunteers do uh, in a very generous way. They help us to get all the kinetic constant, the solubility data, uh, everything that we need to do research, that's what our volunteers do. And that's why I want to start by saying thank you to everybody who works for IUPAC. Uh, besides uh, the chemistry nomenclature, we also produce uh, standardized methods to, to, uh, for analytical chemistry. We do a lot about communication and promotion of chemistry. Uh, we endorse conferences, do a lot of activity around chemistry education and, and industry. And of course, we are organized, as many of you will know already, in divisions and committees. Divisions are the bodies that do the scientific work of the union and committees go really across disciplines. And we have many of them around uh, industry, education, and now also a new one on equity, diversity, inclusion. And so we also, so many times people ask me, how can I get involved within IUPAC? And it's very easy. Uh, there is always an open call for ideas. And that's what we call the project system. So any person, doesn't matter where he or she is from, can submit a project proposal. And if approved, we pro will provide with some funding for carrying out that project. The results of that work is actually published in our books. And in an effort to make all that information fully available and for free, we have this wonderful resource that many people don't know, which is our goal book, which is now online. So if you don't know, uh, let's say a chemical term or a unit or something, you just need to type it there. This is one of my favorite chemi chemi chemistry terms, chirality, and then you will get the definition, the contact constant, the references. So again, we are making uh, a really big effort to have all that information, the work of our volunteers, uh, being um, widely available through this website. We organize conferences and also we also co organize international years. And this picture here is, is very dear to me. It's a picture from Nigeria with these women uh, doing activities around uh, the periodic table. As you know, in 2019, we celebrated the periodic table, the, the International Year of the Periodic Table, and in 2011, the International Year of Chemistry. With IYCN, which is our preferred partner, as uh, Mary Garson said, this is the young IUPAC. Uh, we created Chem Voices to give a platform for everybody to tell about their research, their concern, ideas, projects. This is a window that IUPAC opens to the world for anybody who wants to say something relevant around chemistry. So I encourage all of you to visit Chem Voices and be part of this conversation. Another initiative that uh, I feel really proud of is this. Um, 
one on uh, technology, uh, the top 10 emerging technologies. These ones are technologies that we have uh, identified that we think are going to be critically important to uh, the future of humanity. Uh, so recently, um, we have had selected the top 10 emerging technologies in chemistry for 2021 that were highlighted by nature. And this is our way to tell the world how we believe chemistry is going to help us achieve the sustainable development goals. We believe artificial intelligence is going to be part of that future. And we are working with our partners to create a new chemistry nomenclature, the chemistry nomenclature for machines that is called INCHI, the Inter International Chemical Identifier, which is a series of numbers and letters who identify chemical molecules so computers can read chemistry papers and help us make new discoveries. And I have good news for all of you. Uh, on December 2nd, uh, 2021, uh, United Nations proclaimed this year, 2022, as the International Year of Basic Sciences for Sustainable Development. And this is a great opportunity to work together, to work together and provide this kind of opportunity for the world. Uh, next year, the Global Women Breakfast will be happening during uh, this international year. And with that, we can um, celebrate the international year uh, of sustainable development with many other people all around the world. So uh, thank you. I'm really excited to be working with, with all of you in this Global Women Breakfast. And now it's time for our panel discussion. Thank you very much. Thank you, Joan so and Javier, for these nice introductory words. Um, and with this, I will briefly introduce the panel and then we will get straight into the discussion. Um, just as a short organizational note, um, please um, use the chat for questions. We want this uh, to be interactive. So whoever has additional questions to what we discuss, uh, this will be great to hear from your side. Um, with this, I'd like to start with Dr. Bettina Mierli-Schneider from the Technical University of Vienna, who is the Dean of Academic Affairs and Process Engineering and the Chair of FEMCHEM, um, which I am also personally very connected with because it's a very young network for female chemists at the Technical University that has been very successful in uh, supporting them. Um, and therefore, I'll be very interested also on your, your view. Thank you for joining us today, Bettina. Um, the, her research focus is actually on environmentally friendly processes, and she's also co-founder and acting chair of FEMCHEM, like I just mentioned, and chair of SUSCHEM, which is dealing with sustainability uh, on an EU technology platform. Next up, we have Zhao. And we have Francis Sibarovic uh, from the University of Melbourne and the Bio21 Institute. Um, and she is also president of the Biophysical Society. Um, her research focus is in solid state NMR to analyze membrane biophysics. Um, uh, and she is also a member and uh, ha has special positions in several committees. Uh, at this point, I would like to apologize to all of you. Your CVs are all impressive. So we are shortening them very much here so that we have a lot of time for the discussion. So she's also council member of the IUPAC and president of the Biophysical Society. And um, she has received uh, the, of she has become officer of the Order of Australia by Queen Elizabeth II and is IUPAC distinguished woman of chemistry uh, or, or chemical engineering. Um, so welcome also to you, Francis. Thank you for joining us despite uh, international travel and the late time. Hoi Ling is a, a very young woman in chemistry from the University of Sins in Malaysia. Uh, she's already associate professor, professor and uh, did her PhD studies in Dublin, Ireland. And she is a senior contributor of the IYCN and uh, has got a research fellowship from the Australian government and as well as a US Fulbright visiting scholarship um, for the US. Um, she is also 
a member of several other committees, uh, especially founding member and first female chair of the ACS Malaysia chapter and chartered chemist at the RSC um, and chair of the Young Scientists Network in the Academy of Science uh, in Malaysia. And last but not least, are you seeing the slides already? <laughs> it's, it's Javier Garcia Martinez uh, from the University of Alicante. He's professor in inorganic chemistry and president of IUPAC. Um, his research focus is the synthesis and application of nanostructured materials and catalysis. He actually also already founded a company and is director of the Nanotechnology and Molecular Laboratory. Um, he is active member with uh, quite, quite several distinguished positions in several committees and associations such as IUPAC um, and also president of the Young Academy of Spain, young global leader of the World Economic Forum and fellow of the RSC and ASC. Um, he has received the King Jamie Award uh, in the category of new technologies Emerging Researcher Award and Catherine C. Hach Award from ASC, ACS, excuse me. And with this, I would like to finally welcome you all. Thank you for joining. Uh, I am very excited personally to have started my day here in Australia with a breakfast and end my day also with a breakfast um, because uh, there is always breakfast time if you look at the international watch. Um, and with this, I would like to actually hand over the word to our panelists um, with uh, two introductory questions. Um, first of all, um, what is the, if you have only one major challenge that you can list, what is the one major challenge that we have to uh, overcome in, in terms of gender equality? And also, have you got an experience? Because our topic will be very much about allies, allies in terms of um, not just uh, women or uh, women of a certain position um, should advocate for uh, women's equality, but everyone should actually help us in achieving this. And therefore we, we want to address all genders, ages, positions and races. For this, for this matter. And in this discussion, we would like to focus on how can we actually achieve this? So please name us one challenge that we should focus on in your opinion, if you can only list one, I know there are several, and one experience where you yourself have found an ally or have experienced an ally in action or have been an ally, whatever is your personal experience with this. Maybe um, we want uh, to start with Bettina, because she's first on my screen, there is no real... Okay, so thank you, Katharina, for the introduction. So as I understand, we just have to, to say one thing, one challenge for... Yeah, just for a the brief, brief comment on these two things, yeah. Just yeah, for the, the equality or one big challenge I, I uh, experienced is the ignorance. So I found a lot of people in leading positions who say, okay, that's not a task for me. I, I, I treat men and women the same. I have no problem with that. So, and if you look at teams of these people, most of the time there were just, so women were really underrepresented. So that's one thing I experienced. And so the first time when I found Alice um, was when I came back from, from the parental leave. So I, I got my first two daughters very close to each other. And then, so after I finished my studies and then I, I was thinking about to go to industry. And I was then involved in a, in a project where a woman a colleague um, supported me very much and empowered me to start with a PhD. So I would not have done that if I didn't meet her. So that was the first time and it was really uh, also the time when I started to think about how, how powerful this is to support young people or allies in the same situation um, to go on with their career. And so 
later on during my PhD, I, I had a, some kind of training course just for women to develop, um, to support the development of your career. That was also very impressive. So it was already a bigger group, not a network at that time. And so when going on with my career at the university, uh, then I got to the point where um, there was some um, act, action act, activity from the rectorate to uh, raise the number of female scientists in leading positions. And so with that, we had to make a plan for the faculty, how to support women in their career. And I was involved in that. And one of these points, it was uh, to set up a kind of network or some to, to, to in, empower the communication with the dean. And so that's where FemCamp started. And until now, so it was in 2016, we were four or five women at the very beginning. Uh, now we are 40 women, about 40 women working actively in this network and about 100 who are following us and meeting us. That's wonderful. Thank you, Bettina. Um, maybe Hoi Ling wants to add with her personal experience? Yeah, yeah. Thank you for the questions. I think one of the challenge that I find, at least in the in Malaysia setting sometimes, is we are lacking of uh, women leadership, you know, the mentors. I believe that, you know, um, we need a good mentors to, to, to progress in our career. So one of the allies that I find that really works for me. It's just that after my graduation of a PhD, you know, it's somehow we are at the early career of early career. So what happened is at that time, somehow a few of us from different universities just met together and we actually founded the American Chemical Society Malaysia chapter. The reason is just simple. We, it's, it's just a group of well uh, like-minded with a shared um, values that respect and we are so young. That's why the, the dynamic and the energy that we have is rather almost the same level. And I find that you know, from that moment, actually, my um, career start to pick up. Not because I'm doing very well in research. It's just that you, know, you get that kind of support. And it's just somehow support your, I mean, indirect your research when you start to meet people because it's a form of network. So I always think it's not just about individual, but some people have an individual as their mentor, but some has their you know, certain organization that really support their career. So in my case, I have to say that uh, since the establishment of American Chemical Society in Malaysia chapter, it really works for me and I, I appreciate that. Yeah, thank you. What a wonderful experience. Thank you, Harleen. Um, Maybe Javier wants to comment next. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so thank you for the opportunity. Um, so I would like to put actually two ch challenges, not, not just one, uh, because they are probably two sides of the, of the first coin. Uh, the, 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 the way I see it is that a lot of people feel that diversity in general is just a fashion, something that we need to do because this is what we are supposed to do, not because we really believe in diversity and inclusion. So there is a little bit of a passion, something that you are supposed to do, or even worse, uh, this is something that if you don't do, you're going to look bad at. So that's a big challenge, uh, to make sure that people are engaged in this conversation because they want to do it, because they understand, as Bettina was saying, that this is important, this is not a passion, and this is not something you need to do because otherwise you're going to be penalized or you're going to have a bad image. So that's one side of the coin. The other side of the coin is that people that approach this in a very aggressive manner. Again, this is not a conversation. This is not something we want to do because we are convinced, but because we are forcing other people to do it. Uh, so I see this is a, a two sides of the same coin. People that just feel this is a passion, this is not for them. They feel kind of obliged to, to, to promote diversity. And then there is another group of people who approach this uh, topic um, just in a very aggressive, not very constructive manner, uh, like, like them versus us kind of approach. But that's not my way. Uh, I understand that different people approach different topics in different ways, uh, but that's just not the way I like to build bridges. Um, responding to your second question, I hope I, I provided some, 
some good uh, useful uh, material for discussion later. Uh, the, the second part of your question is allies. And I have to say, IUPAC has been a wonderful uh, ally for me. Um, diversity is very important for me personally. I, I encourage that in so many different ways. Uh, I'm being a member of the IUPAC review group, which is probably the most important thing that we are doing in IUPAC in many decades to, to change the way we operate. And, and the one idea I put on the table from day one is a committee on, on ethics, diversity, inclusion. And, um, uh, and ethics. So, so the, 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 for, for me, this is very important. And sometimes when you lead an international organization, you find some champions, people that um, feel the same way you're feeling and you try to, to build bridges with that people and to empower that people. And at the same time, you, 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 you find other people that they want to block those kind of approaches that maybe feel that, um, you don't understand what you are doing, or maybe that you are too um, naive, or, or that you are not doing what you're supposed to be doing. Uh, so it's always a, a compromise. It's always a compromise. People that are, are always asking you to do more, and other people that are telling you that you are doing way too much. Um, so, and I hope that's going to be part of our conversation moving forward, is how we build those alliances, how we find those allies that Katerina was uh, talking about. I think that's what we need. We need to engage in a conversation which is constructive, that everybody feels invited. Uh, the people that feel that we are moving too slowly and the people that feel that we are moving way too fast. Because if we leave those two communities out of the conversation, we are missing a significant part of, of, of our people. And uh, I don't know, maybe that was a little bit of a personal uh, story how I, I, I'm feeling it when I'm, I'm leading a, a, a huge organization. Uh, and then the other thing that could be interesting for our discussion later on are cultural differences in different countries. Uh, the way you approach not only to diversity, to, but to change, uh, right? This is the way I see the world. Uh, diversity is very important for me. But even the concept of diversity means different things for different people. Uh, for IUPAC, gender diversity is very important, but even more important, I would say, is geographical diversity because we are a global organization and we are not doing very well, very well there. Uh, but also um, religion, um, sexual orientation, different political views. And then when you broaden the discussion to those topics, then, um, then the conversation becomes more difficult because different parts of the world are not happy having those discussions, right? So I think I said enough, but uh, I hope uh, we will uh, talk more about uh, these things on, on the discussion. Great, thank, thank you, you, Javier. Uh, and last but not least, uh, Francis, what are your thoughts to this question? Well, I'm going to sound a bit like a broken record, but I also want to do one better than Xavier, and I'm going to have three challenges. So I think the major one is the leaky pipeline, and that's particularly in science. You know, we see that, right? We're not retaining people. Women are less likely to be promoted. There's a gender pay, pay gap, even for the same level of work. And you see male professors getting paid more than females. And also segregation into different occupations. And you see the physical sciences versus the biological sciences. You have different gender proportions. And even within chemistry itself, you notice, for example, there's, I notice, you know, certain parts of chemistry where there are more men than women. So that's rather general, but I want to go now and tell you a specific example and a fairly recent one about an ally helping my, myself. So not so long ago when I was a new member of a rather senior international panel and the men kept talking over me and they didn't give me a chance to speak. It was primarily a male panel and I didn't understand the group culture, so I was a bit hesitant to speak up. And I found it very empowering when another woman who'd been on this committee for several years, she interrupted the chair when he went on to a new point on the agenda. And she said, oh, sorry, I didn't quite catch, you know, I went to hear what Francis said. And then, you know, I suddenly knew there's an ally, right? And then the two of us worked together over three days to educate the chair and the men to let us have our chance to talk. Thank you. That's my personal example, and it was very recent. Thank you very much for this very recent one. 
that those are all very, very uh, interesting stories and from such different perspectives, uh, very interesting to hear. So maybe we can also uh, continue on this path and maybe also to add on to the two sides of the coin. Um, what do you think? Is it more important to have policy or culture uh, change for uh, equity and diversity? Um, Catherine, maybe I can answer. Sure. Yeah, in my opinion, in my opinion, both are equally important, you know, because the culturally is something embedded since your, during your upbringing or is in your culture. And the policies is rather important because sometimes you need the policies to make a change. It's like a top-down instruction, you know, so that you can make a change. So for instance, I would like to give uh, an example. Um, for policies, I would say, you know, when we talk about gender equity, it includes like, you know, the maternity leave and paternity leave. Because sometimes the male will also claim that, you know, you all very often overlook on their needs. So in terms of policy, we also have to look into the paternity leave and uh, childcare facilities, you know, that kind of stuff. So those kind of policies are rather important. Besides that, on the culture part, I think this is something can be built along the way and from in fact i find that we already make a, a small change by having this kind of discussion you know in a healthy way where we can discuss openly and uh, for for me both gender has to have this uh, empathetic and sympathetic uh, values so that we can understand each other because otherwise we there will be always a blaming game so i would say both policies and as well as uh, culturally uh, values that has to be change all have to be set up yeah thank you very interesting i hear collaboration um out of there which uh, is probably a key part if, if you're talking about allies because it will involve more people than just yourself and your team and your everything you will have to reach out probably to to gain allies any any comments on on, on Hoiling's answer So I, I would say that when you enter into politics, you want to move a particular agenda, right? And if you wait for your society to already be on the same page, you're never going to introduce important changes, right? So I think public policies needs to happen first, even if there's still not a culture, if not everybody is part of, of those discussions. Um, so uh, I need our poli uh, policymakers need to be brave and bold and pass legislation that will support diversity and inclusiveness, even if some topics are still controversial within those societies. Uh, it, it is not easy. Uh, and again, uh, I was talking before about how difficult is this line between the people that want you to do more and the people that think that you're doing way too much. Uh, but when, when um, for our policymakers, I think they are elected because people want them to move a particular agenda. And if, if we are voting people who want to promote diversity, I think they should pass those legislations, even if there's still a little bit of, of resistance uh, within population. So yeah, culture and policies need to, to go hand by hand, as Holly was saying, but I think we need uh, bold, uh, great leadership. And, and that's what we are lacking, I think. And I think the policy, by putting it in place, you show your values, but policy and culture do go together. I always think of it, you know, when seatbelts came in, we all, all raged against seatbelts. And now it's part of your culture. You just put it on, you feel lost in a car when you don't have it, but you know that's important. So um, I, I was thinking about certain things that I would like done to sort of change policy or culture in uh, my uh, group. And one of the things is, especially, you know, when you're appointing people, I think we should make it a longer shortlist, ins insist that there are uh, uh, different genders on the shortlist, for example, and be transparent about wages, uh, use structured interviews so people get asked the same sort of questions instead of, you know, having different questions for uh, males versus females. But have, have women mentor men? I mean, we, we tend, to, uh, I was mentored by a man and then, uh, but I several different men, very rarely mentored by a woman. But um, I think 
men would learn a lot if they were mentored by women. I recently mentored a group of four people because they didn't have enough mentors. And we just mentored each other. We were all at different stages of our careers. And that was an interesting experience for me. It was very rewarding. And you know, the, as a society, we need, and as um, I'm in academia, we need to encourage flexible working and shared parental leave policies. And that will keep women in science longer. All, all very interesting ideas. Thank you, all of you. Um, and we already have a very interesting question by Bianca, um, which is uh, referring to this sort of thing that um, women and men might uh, sometimes be uh, referred to as, as capable in different types of areas. And where, how, how do we share these values um, of the the types of work that are being done and where can where can some gender contribute more to one part of the uh, part of one part of the work than another um, what are your thoughts on this and where could allies come into the game to to be a game changer in this in this situation which is definitely true if in, at least in some instances so if I may, and I hope I'm not going to be too controversial here, but that's something I really believe in, is um, I, I'm pretty much against like male's roles and women's roles, because that enters in a conversation of binary uh, characters. So men's are this way and women's are the other way. And, me, and, and, and this kind of conversation we're having right now, even about gender diversity, for me, then gender diversity is not only equal opportunities, it's also considering human beings beyond their gender. So there is a whole spectrum. It's not just male, female, binary, that's it. Um, I think the conversation needs to go much broader than that. Of course, in terms of, of opportunities, it is true that female has less opportunities. And, and there are many studies that prove that even to publish a paper is more difficult if you put you know, your name as a female, as, as, as a principal investigator or as a corresponding author. That is true. But also, I think we need to, to broaden our discussion and realizing that um, gender is not a binary system and, and pretty much against this, this is a male ro role or job or characteristic. This is better done by a man, by a man or this is better done by a female. Um, because we are not like that. We are much more complex, multifaceted beings that just uh, our genders, which is only one part of what we are. That is great. And how do we get different types of people to be of this wonderfully open uh, opinion? I'd just like to make a comment because I really do th think, I agree with Xavier wholeheartedly, but there is a bias and you see it and you see less women on the research committees, more women on the education committee. And it's not necessarily because we choose to do that. You know, we get asked to do that. So, and we have to think about that carefully. And I remember when, um, you know, when I first joined the, uh, the university, that's how I learned which committees were important. It was the ones that had fewer women on it. <laughs> and it was a really strong correlation. It's much better today. But even so, um, you know, my, one of my students was a postdoc somewhere else and she complained because she goes, they get me to organize the morning teas and the birthdays, but they don't get the boys to do that. And, and it happens. And, you know, her group leader is a woman. So it, it's not, not just uh, you know, men doing it. You know, we do it. We, we have our own biases. Yes. And how, how can we actually counteract this? Maybe uh, I can. I can add on that, you know, uh, so, so, at least based on my experience, I, I mean, um, like I mentioned before, I've been the chair of ACS major chapter and also I was the chair of the working group of science leadership in, in Young Scientist and Network Academy Science major. I, I, I would say that I'm very fortunate because my co-chair, both of them are males and we somehow work extremely well, you know, so I, I noticed that it's the, the probably it's not the, the definite solution because sometimes you have a committee, you have election, you know, kind of you can't control the voting. But I think it's always good to have a, a balance of gender in the committees. And I also believe 
I, I mean, I look, reflect back, actually, I believe it's more on the personality. Somehow, I, I, I kind of more the strong headed and usually the, my co-chair is the one on the more gentle approach. So somehow we work really, really well. So besides, we are talking about uh, the gender, that is a stereotyping like what Javier was mentioning, you know, males supposed to behave this way, this way, females supposed to behave that way. But to certain extent, there's uh, some, some, I mean, right? I mean, I, I realize I'm more meticulous because I'm a female, you know. But other than that, I think it's much more on the personality and how we handle certain uh, issues. So if I find myself, I'm more the, the like, you know, very fast. I need someone to actually hold me back a bit and say, hold on, hold on, please think for a while. And sometimes, you know, in that situation, it works much better. I don't make a very uh, fast decision and the other person will ask me, hey, let us ponder for a while and work together. So I, I realized that situation actually helps a lot during my, my tenure as a, a chair, you know, in any leadership position. Yeah, I think that Perfect. would be Thank you. Thank you, Harleen. Yeah. Bettina also had a comment. Yeah, sorry. I, I just wanted, it, it's very interesting to listen to you and to your experiences. And um, maybe I'm just hanging with the, with the beginning. So for my opinion, it needs not only the policies, policy, because in Austria, we have a lot of regulations and rules that support uh, gender equality, but the, the mindset. So, is, so it, we, we, I would say we need, we need a, a, a big change um, in, in the mindset. So, um, and that's something that just works from bottom up. So these tasks that typically women have to do the social events and men are more uh, asked to do the, the presentations and the scientific tasks. Um, that's one side, but I also experienced women who, who told me that um, they don't want to go to the conference. They like it more to, to, to have the man there because uh, she, she, she doesn't want to do that. So it's also within our, ourselves that we have to get more self-confident. And that's something I actually do a lot, yeah, to empower young women to, to be strong, to go there, to show what they can. Yeah, so it's like also something we have to look at. Yeah, so why is it like this? And this is something that's, that happens before they come to the university, that's already the, the society. So I'm talking about the society in Austria. And so as Javier said it at the beginning, it's very different in different cultures in different countries. Um, but that's also something I, I, I have in mind or have, that's I, what I do during, during my work in this, in this FemChem network. Wonderful. Um, that's great. So we, we have this uh, combination of policy and culture that is important. Uh, I think everyone agreed on this, um, even though the balances might be a bit of a personal taste, what we think will get us ahead faster. Um, so in these, in these changing uh, change change of rules and change of culture how can can we uh, like how should should those change makers be so what would a typical or an ideal ally look like for you what what are the traits that that are very important for such a person and how can we encourage people to be this way Maybe, maybe Bettina wants to start. <laughs> so there, there is a list of things I, I think would help to change the mindset. Um, so for the networks, it's very important um, on one hand to be seen, to be visible, to, to find the place to connect. Yeah, so this is one thing. And, but there has to be no barrier to get into this or nearly no barrier to get into this network. So if it's something international, maybe you're afraid to, to, to connect because of the language or something like that. And uh, so there has to be a certain structure so to find your information, but still, if you're part of this network, there has to be enough space to, to develop for your self-development, yeah, to, to enfold your 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 um, 
special uh, knowledge or, or whatever you can bring in into this network. And also to get to create an open-minded and, and sensitive environment so that everybody feels um, and welcome there and, and feels fine. And of course, also to establish this network and to get a big group really to change, you need a lot of fun too. So it's not always just like being very serious about something, but also to be together and to get friends and, and to find some kind of family. So that's something uh, that is needed to get this network alive. And then to have a change of mindset, you have always to work on yourself, a lot of self-reflection and also um, to understand how things are going on and where to, we do have to do change things or to bring in some different ideas. So that's my experience, how it works. Thank you, Bettina. Francis, how do you see the perfect ally? I think that people who encourage others to do their best, they put them, them forward, they nominate them, they encourage them, they listen to all members of the team. Um, but I was thinking, um, you, know, you know, how do we make people do this who don't really believe it? You know, we do say that diverse teams are more intelligent, they work better, businesses have better outcomes, but people, you know, don't really believe that or find it too hard to do that. So I'd, I'd like to see more targets. And you see that when you do set targets, not necessarily quotas, but targets, you know, people work, work towards them. So for example, with the Order of Australia, you know, that, that they set a target that they wanted to get 45% women nominated and within two years they did, you know, they almost doubled it. You know, people come forward and they start doing that. And I'd, I'd, I'd like to see more people, more male champions. So for example, when I did a women in leadership of course, uh, they gave us, they assigned people to shadow, right? And one of the women said to the vice chancellor, this was back in the 90s, um, uh, are you going to allow yourself to be sh shadowed? And he said, oh, I hadn't thought of that. Of course I should, you know, and that's a really good example, right? He did it and then all the senior team did it. And so we need, you know, people to identify as champions, but I think allies should be an informal role and you do it a different way and you do it your own way. All right. Um, of course, in order to get as many people uh, enrolled as possible, um, it should be something that suits your personal style. You cannot uh, make someone something that they are not. Um, um, so, Holding, do you maybe have a comment on how can we encourage this sort of behavior from, from the outside? to get more people to, to uh, show these nice tra traits of, of, of giving equal opportunity and uh, equal speaking time, equal um, whatever uh, to everyone. Yeah, actually, I know uh, the questions before. I, one of the things that came into my mind is the word respect. Because I, I, I realized that, you know, at the end of the day, we have to respect each other. I mean, we know that each of us have our own strength and also our own weakness or limitations, you know. So that's why I find that in the ally, what is more important is to rest, to have this respect and acknowledge each other's strength and also use that strength to complement each other. So that's why I, I believe that you know, the word respect is, you know, just somehow part you know, come out when, when I saw that kind of questions. Another thing is, I always believe in any network or any partnership, anything, um, we must always have a shared or, or shared values or a shared values, you know, it's very, very important. It, sometimes in any, any network that is not completely like wrong or right, it's just that it didn't work because we didn't have, we don't have a similar shared values that is very, very important. So if you have a shared value, you will work extremely hard, you will complement each other and then uh, works towards the goal that you you, you are, you know, imagining or trying to achieve. Yeah, that's quite yeah. important. Yeah. yeah, that's quite 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 a good, uh, respect is quite a good keyword because we also have a question from, from Bianca and Conrad um, who are asking, uh, is it, 
um, do you experience that sometimes uh, male colleagues talk to you more harshly or that the tone is very different in which male and females talk to each other, uh, depending also on the gender? And uh, how, how can you impact this? So this would also be a, a, an example of, of how to encourage ally behavior, I, I would assume. Um, so do you, have, do you have a comment to that? Well, uh, actually, it depends, you know. I think it, you know, when people, uh, whether they talk more harsher, I think that one is also depends on the, the ge different generations. I, I, I find that, you know, the more senior generation or, you know, older generation, maybe they still have the mindset that uh, males are more superior than the females. So sometimes the way they talk is like very, very authoritative, sounds like. But I, I, I find that nowadays, um, it doesn't happen so much anymore. Uh, at least from the malicious uh, perspective, I find um, that it doesn't really related so much of, about the gender. Sometimes it's about also that um, even among females, sometimes that kind of environment also does happen. So I would like to mention again that it's much more on the personality and rather than gender uh, related in, in my opinion yeah that sounds like you have witnessed a lot of progress uh thank you very much francis you also have a com comment to this i saw in the chat <laughs> i was just answering bianca is that is that what you meant yes um, so, yes uh so I, and, and sometimes it's a cultural thing too. So you, you'll see people at work and they'll, they'll say, you know, that they should do that, that they're, you know, got a PhD, for example. And so uh, one, another example I had is when we were fill, filling the magnets, the workshop staff refused to do it because that wasn't part of their work, work. So I went in and I filled the magnets with nitrogen for about two weeks and then they started to do it. Yeah. <laughs> And so that's the way that I do it. I'm not, not embarrassed about, you know, picking up paper. I can remember male colleagues saying, you know, as head of department, you shouldn't be picking up rubbish. And I go, well, you know, if somebody drops something, you pick it up and you clean up. Somebody has to clean up after you. Anyway, yeah. But there are different ways that you do it and how you handle people. But I think an example is, is good. You know, I don't mind filling the magnets with nitrogen. I just don't have time to do it on a weekly basis. <laughs> Wonderful. Javier, so a nod from your side. Uh, what, what's your comment to this? So, so this is not an easy question because you see what we are trying to do is to change people's behavior. We want people to act according to our own values. You see, we, we see the world in this way and we would like people to, to behave in the same way. And, and that's the cultural change that we are trying to, to, to uh, promote here. For me, which, uh, and I think this goes back to what Francis was saying, is leading by example. When people see that what you are doing is more impactful or that we propose to our students role models, female role models that are meaningful to them, because, but this is going to take several generations. In, in a way, uh, th this significant change, because it's a significant change, is the, is the way we we, we see people's roles in the world. It's not, it's not an easy thing, right? So it, coming back to my first point, it is trying to, to engage everybody in this significant cultural chain based on respect, as we heard before, right? But also empathy. Uh, one of the problems we are experiencing here in Europe, and Medina was mentioning before, the, the new laws we have here in, in Europe really to, to promote this agenda, I mentioned before that that's the way to go, right? To, to promote uh, a, a agenda that is going to, to cause these changes. But at the same time, because some people feel this has been imposed on them, now we see the stream right uh, coming back into Europe uh, and reacting against uh, these changes. So, so uh, that, that's a delicate compromise we need to find. In, you know, yes, we want people to behave following our own uh, values, which I think are general values and good values, but other people feel otherwise. And uh, we also need to go through this exercise of respect and empathy. Because if we impose uh, our views on, on other people, we are going to get more resistance and it's not going to be that effective. 
I remember, uh, this, uh, again, as a personal note, I wrote an editorial in a top journal, chemistry journal, uh, quite recently, about diversity. And I, I mentioned uh, the gender gap, the kind of things we are discussing today, also movements like, like Black Lives Matter that you was mentioning before. And I got several very nasty emails in my inbox uh, saying that uh, I should be dealing with chemistry and not with politics, right? So it's always a, a delicate balancing, you know, trying to, to move your own agenda. Diversity is very important for me, but at the same time, making sure that everybody's part of the conversation is not going to be easy because the two camps are very far away. Um, but we need to be smart and understanding that this it may take longer than we want. Um, and also there is another thing that was mentioned before, and I also want to comment. There are males that are very shy that they were never asking for a role. And also we need to care about that people, either if they are males or females, that their voice is never heard. So if in another uh, meeting, like the one that Francis was mentioning before, that they didn't have, see, didn't have the opportunity to say anything, if that person is male or female or whoever, and we, we realize that somebody somebody's, somebody's voice is not heard, we should, especially we talk too much and I talk too much, uh, we, we, we should say, you know, I would like to hear from that person. That, that's leading by example. Anyway, may, maybe too many different thoughts because this discussion is bringing to me so many different ideas. I don't know if I'm being even coherent, but uh, anyway. You are very I'm much, saying. you are very much understood, I think, at least from my perspective. Um, and I, I, I agree. Um, so what, what do you think uh, will different ages, different genders, different positions also, professional positions, bring to the table if we include everyone? What, how, how, how will this uh, affect uh, equality? Isn't that the best sort of equality? So we have different ages, different genders, different geographies, as Xavier mentioned before. You know. Um, I went away and I've mentioned this a few times. I went to Antarctica with 100 women and you can have too many women in a room, right? You know, but um, you start missing, although I complained about the men, you know, talking too much, but, you know, you, you miss what they bring to the table. You know, and often they want to, you know, go forward more. And often women want to get a consensus and it takes too long. We balance each other out and we achieve better outcomes. What a nice, yeah, what a, what a nice comment. Um, Bettina, do you, do you have anything to add? Uh, I already started to think about a lot of things, but what was already said, what I think also is very important, is respect within the whole group, so towards each other. And as a group, if you want to change things, it's really important to have a common aim or a kind of common spirit. I call I, I love this word to have common spirit because there you have everything in there. And uh, so, and if, we, if everybody feels fine in this group, so others want to come in. So whoever will be there and, and whatever is the cultural background because the gender uh, tasks or, or, or thing is just one part of the whole diversity room so that was also already said yeah so if we succeed to make a more open environment open open-minded person to, to meet each other with more respect also the diversity is is a, a very very um it will happen so it there, there we do not have to make any efforts to have it it's just a daily normal situation then Great, thank you. I realized that we are already going over time. So I think Mary gave a nice example in the chat. Maybe Mary, uh, you could, could actually repeat this for all of us uh, in your own words um, uh, as, as sort of a, one of the concluding remarks as well. I think that would be very thank nice you. seeing as you have been very, very important for the whole development of GWD. Katarina, thank you very much. I just uh, I just commented, it's one of the things I remember 
about Nicole Moreau as president of Vayupac, uh, that she would sit at the registration desk and hand out badges. And when she gave me my badge, I was like shocked, like this is the president of Vayupac giving me my badge. Um, but actually what she was doing was finding out who everybody was and saying a few words to everybody. Uh, that was at the launch of the International Year of Chemistry. But I also remember that she actually, uh, at the Pacific M meeting, which was December 2010, again, she was sitting in the IUPAC um, booth uh, interacting with people in the exhibition hall. So she didn't go to many technical sessions. Um, and she was jolly, ha jolly handy. We were trying to organize the very first global women's breakfast in January of 2011. And Nicole introduced me to people um, who subsequently held breakfast. So, um, you know, her manner uh, and her thinking about how to achieve networks, it was really very different um, to, to, to anybody else I'd ever met before. And so I'm telling you this because this is one, one of the things that stuck in my mind about her. Um, that she has many beautiful characteristics, but it was that openness and transparency and willingness just to join in that Francis described that, that left a, a memorable um, message for me. Um, so yeah, there you go, Javier. <laughs> a future role for you on top of everything else. Anyway, I think I might stop at this point because it is, it, uh, Francis is still speaking well, uh, but I'm beginning to realize that processing the English language is actually getting, getting quite hard for me at this, uh, at this time, having been speaking all day, which is not something I do a lot of these days, right? Um, you reach a point where you realize that you really um, struggle to digest the messages. Um, so thank you for letting me just say these few uh, final words. And thank you, you and I must catch up for a coffee. You and I must catch up for a coffee sometime. Thank you very thank much. You, I would love that. Um, Mary, um, I think this is a wonderful example for the end. Uh, it seems like there exist persons who are able to create allies out of strangers. Um, no matter what the gender, age, uh, prof profession, position, or race. Um, and I think these are very, very nice concluding remarks. So unless any of the panel members have anything to add, um, I am I'm very grateful for having had this um, very open-minded discussion um, where each and every opinion was valued and um, we, we could actually have a safe and, and, and friendly discussion about a uh, controversial sometimes still issue. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you. To, to thank all you, of you. It was a great discussion. Maybe thank can you. we take a picture? I don't know if all the things, if you, you would like to turn off on your cameras um, so that we can take a global picture. Ah, nice to see all of you. Katrina, can you take it? So. Uh, yes, yes, of course I can. Thank you very much. Um, just give me one second. Yeah, this will work. Wonderful. You have to smile. <laughs> I'm trying. <laughs> trying. <laughs> Let me get another one. That is great. Uh, we all okay. look awesome. Just, Thank you very much. Yeah. Um, just to finalize, just coming, just one very last slide. So for all of you uh, that are in here and that would like to uh, get engaged within, uh, um, so IYCN. So here you can see our uh, social media channels, our website, our email. So again, please get in touch with us. Uh, as we mentioned on this discussion has been great. And that IYC and everything that we do, uh, really uh, diversity, equity, and inclusion is really in place in everything that we do. In all the initiatives, and Katerina and myself in here, we are here representing IYC, and we both know that this is uh, very true. Uh, and really want to engage with all of you. So please get in touch with us, and um, uh, because this is really important to, uh, to make a change, uh, not only across chemical science but in, in general. And um, so uh, uh, we are very pleased to, to listen from you. And of course, again, to thank again to all the speakers for this great panel discussion and for taking your time very late in some of the case, 
Uh, so very, we're very thankful to all of you. Also, thank you to you, Katarina, for uh, moderating the session. It has been great. And I really hope that in a, a very short time, we'll not be always talking about the importance of diversity, gender equality. I think this is really something that we should all strive for. And of course, at the IYCN, we are very uh, pleased to, uh, to uh, always uh, um, make uh, a point on this. And this is, as I mentioned before, it's really implicit in our uh, actions and activities that we are uh, pursuing. So from my side, thank you very much to all of you. And thank you also, Joao, for being such a great help behind the scenes and um, sharing all the tasks of organizing this event equally.